The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to young adult novelist Laura Kennedy, who just published her first book, Double Take. Stick around and don't get too chummy with sweet little old ladies who grew up in Hollywood. They're crazy. <coughs> So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media Interview, brought to you by Amazon.com, Audible.com, and 1-800-DIAL-DJs. Please stop by the website, MrMedia.com, click on our advertisers, support the show. And remember, there's more than a thousand interviews available at MrMedia.com. We've been doing this since February 2007. Hope you'll find something you like. And thanks for listening. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of teenage girls who hate their lives but not as much as they hate you for making the mistake of ever providing them with an honest, straightforward answer to one of their questions in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Laura Kennedy? Now there's a name from the past. Almost, oh my, 30 years ago, I had the crazy idea to start a lifestyle magazine for young people in the Tampa Bay area. It was a few years before creative loafing entered the market, and I thought it was an unfulfilled niche in my adopted community. What I needed were advertising salespeople. What I got, apparently, were writers. The magazine lasted maybe four issues, but it was a blast. We sold very few ads, but everyone who worked on Jump Monthly is still friendly and pretty much in contact, even though it took Laura Kennedy, then a salesperson, now a writer, well, about 28 years to get back in touch. <laughs> Laura, who I always found to be quite charming, resurfaced recently with her first book, a young adult novel titled Double Take. As first efforts go, it's remarkably compelling and smartly executed, telling the story of 16-year-old Brooks' life-changing meeting with an 80-year-old former actress named Laura de France. Now, if you are a 16-year-old girl, you will probably enjoy reading this story. And because Laura Kennedy places her tale in Florida's world-famous Greek sponge fishing village, Tarpon Springs, it is also quite picturesque. Now, I'm delighted to welcome to the show today an old friend. Laura Kennedy, welcome to Mr. Media. Thanks, Bob. Great seeing you. Great to see you. Uh, so, you you finally ready to get back to work and sell some ads? <laughs> well, no. I <laughs> That's a different stage in my life. I think I'm past that, although I guess I'm still selling. You're always selling something. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, so how did you find yourself writing a young adult novel? Well, I've been a writer a long time. I started off in my early 20s writing love stories. I uh, wrote about uh, 30 and sold 24 of them. But then I had kids, four children in a row, and then life kind of got in the way. So I have been writing quite a bit the last 10 years. I have a small writing group, and one of the women had sold young adult before, and I thought, you know what, maybe that would be good for me because I have kind of a young life, uh, light voice and, and attitude. And, and I find that a 17-year-old protagonist or a 16-year-old, that's perfect for me. I think that's where I'm stuck in life. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. And uh, you, four kids, uh, any of them girls? Three girls and a boy. Oh, grown, wow. of course. Yeah. All right. So you uh, you know this you know this ground pretty well. I know it. I know that that gig. You're right. So I I got to ask you, what do you know about about being a teenage girl? Tell us some tips. I, I'm I, I'm I'm the I, owner of one, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, you know, I think we're we're, we're all pretty much the same throughout our lives, I and mean, when we get older, and you know, get some gray hairs or some lines and whatever, but we're basically the same person and we all basically want the same thing. So uh, 
I, I, I just kind of, she's kind of me, but a much younger version of me. And she makes mistakes, but she's basically a good kid, a good person trying to do the right thing, but very often uh, doesn't. I, I, now, I don't know. It's been a long time, but w one of the things I, I remember most uh, most about you is I always found you were very light of spirit, very, you know, I said charming in the introduction, and I just remember, and I'm sure, you know, no one is like this all the time, but what I always remembered about whenever I was around you or talked to you is it just didn't seem like you let things bother you. You went through life with a certain, uh, je, je ne sais quoi, shall we say, um, you know. Uh, and, and I think that Brooke has a bit of that. I mean, she wants everything to work out. She wants people to get along. And I think there's a lot of me and Brooke or a lot of uh, Brooke and me, you know. And uh, I've always said to different writers in a group, it doesn't matter what you're writing, your personality is going to come across in that, that novel. Whether it's a mystery, uh, it, other people don't realize it, but if they're kind of a negative person, your protagonist is a little negative, you know. It's it, it just what you are. You, you can't help but you put your personality into the novel, especially your protagonist. I and suppose there are exceptions, but I think that pretty much holds true. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I, it was interesting to read. I, I know I didn't know this before. Your mother was a romance writer. My mother was a writer. She supported the family writing. I, as a little girl, I thought all mothers wrote. I went to somebody's house when I was about five and said to the woman, where's your typewriter? You know, you know, what do you do all day? My mother writes. And she wrote and sold probably two romance stories a month for over 30 years. A month? Wow. She, she's a ground them out, you know. Now, yeah. were these the, the chaste kind or were these the hot They're pretty chaste, kind? yeah. According to today's standards, they had racy titles that really uh, very... <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty innocent, pretty innocent stories. Yeah. yeah, they didn't say much. Maybe insinuated a lot, but didn't say much. A lot of, um, oh, what's the... Uh... Well, I remember being in first grade and one of the teachers saying, no, what does your mother have out now? And I said, kisses for dollar bills. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. That was the name and they all laughed. That was wow. the story. Yeah, well, that was it. But... Uh, they actually, when she started reading, and there's really not much there, you know, and did, salacious at least. You know. Did you read many of her books? Her sto There were stories. Oh, now. stories. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, n no, n not really. Maybe a few as a teen, but you know, kids don't pay much attention to what their parents are doing. Doesn't matter if they're selling shoes or writing stories. You know, it's same old, same old. That's what you're used to. Well, I can't imagine. I mean, if I wrote romance stories. Uh, <laughs> I cannot imagine. It would probably be the last thing on the face of the planet my daughter would ever choose to read. I mean, exactly. she, I, don't, I don't think she reads anything I write now, but no, but probably, that's okay. probably but, not. But, she might, you know, years from now. Oh, that dad was pretty good. Well, and and I know uh, all the time she's been in high in, in uh, school. Frankly, I've avoided certain kinds of writing because I didn't want to embarrass her or have exactly. kids at school talk about. Oh my God, your your dad wrote you know, X, Y, Z, how can you, uh, you know, I can't yes. send my kids over there because. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. But these stories did not have names on them. So that was, she could put anything she wanted in there pretty much. Did she, had a, did she have a wild uh, imaginary life, do you think? She w was really a creative genius. I, I never saw anyone who could plot the way she could plot. Huh. You know, she was a real master. So and I guess I, I think you inherit talent. I really do. I, you have to develop it, of course, but I, I believe that you inherit a tendency to be able to play the violin or to write or to dance. I think it, it's definitely a genetic thing, at least partially. How did her writing affect her relationship with your father? Was it a good thing? Was it a... Well, <laughs> that's sort of a different story. Um, I, I don't really know. It's hard for me to know because she really was pretty much the backbone, the financial backbone of the family, but he did work, you know. Uh, I think he underplayed it. Um, she never really said that much about it, you know, financially or anything. So it isn't like if, you, if you're for certain occupations, people pretty well know what you make. Of course, this is a long time ago and the salaries weren't as large, but it's all relative. 
one of the yeah. things writers hear a lot is that uh, you should certainly when you start is write what you know and i think you've kind of indicated that here um the, the, it seems like you 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 took that advice and double take both writing about this teenage girl that obviously you feel very comfortable with and and you you put the story in a community where you live and that you've been and know a lot pretty well well in the book i um i don't know if you remember this because you're younger than I am. However, there was a movie in 1953 called Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef, mm -hmm. and it was filmed in Tarpon Springs. Now, the older generation here remembers it full well because Robert Wagner came with Terry Moore. I don't know how long they were here, but probably several weeks. It was shot on location, and it was a Romeo and Juliet story, the Greek boy and the, the girl from another family, and the feuding families, of course. And I took that. I always thought that was fascinating. And in fact, when I saw it um, as a, a young girl, I 12 or something, I said to my mother, I want to move to Tarpon Springs. Well, be careful what you ask for, because here I am. I mean, it's the only place I ever asked to go to. And she just said, well, we'll see. And that was that. Because I guess I thought I'd find Robert Wagner. Well, I, I knew he didn't live here, but I thought maybe I'd find a handsome Greek boy. Uh, then I took that idea. I also have a friend whose older sister is, and she's 90 years old now. Her name is Sharon Randolph, and she's a movie star, a retired movie star. And she'd tell me, uh, Dale, her sister, would tell me stories about her at MGM. She went to school with Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. So I put it all together and created the antagonist, Laura de France who lives in a big Victorian right here on Spring Bayou, Tarvin Springs, and put it all together and that's what you get. <laughs> Double take is the result. So it was a lot of fun, it really was. I, I really enjoyed writing it. Wait, I just put two names together. Is that Adele Woodyard? Woodyard? Who was the sister of Sharon? Um, no, it isn't, but I do know Adele. Oh, okay, all right. So, okay, yes, I know Adele. Okay. I, uh, we're, just, in fact, we're very good friends. She lives up here in Darwin. It's just a coincidence that both women are named Adele. Yes. Oh. No, the other one was Dale. Dale, Dale. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I have an Adele friend and Dale and another Rodell, and I always said one had to move because I couldn't keep him straight. <laughs> so so Dale, Dale is back in uh, California. No, Dale, I had met her on some modeling shoots and things about 10 years ago. Anyway, she told me all these fabulous stories about her sister. Um, their mother had raised them all to be in show business, and Sharon was the most um, successful. Her name was Janice Chambers, if anybody wants to Google her. She had a gorgeous uh, voice, and, well, she was my inspiration for Laura de France. Got it. And you just happened to give Laura de France your first name. Yes, I did. I, I just no particular reason. It just sounded good together, and that was it. Nice. Um... Uh, there, I was going to say, I, obviously, you started explaining the backstory about this. Now, you also make Robert Wagner a character in the book. Uh, that's, yes, that's I did. That's a slippery did. slope, I, isn't it? Is that what? That's kind of a slippery slope there, you know. It may be a slippery slope, and we'll find out how slippery it is. <laughs> um, I did send two copies to his publicist and two to Terry Moore. Hmm. Um, I haven't heard anything. So I don't know if they ever got them. They maybe get stuff all the time. Just mentioning his involvement in the book. But I'm figuring the fact that I said nothing but positive good things, that um, why would he care? It's publicity. In fact, you may have noticed, Bob, he has a, a memoir that just came out. Um, let me see if I have a name of it here. I've written. Okay. Oh, he's calling it uh, As Time Goes By. And it's just um, just come out the last couple of weeks. So who knows? Who knows what will happen? I'll have to <laughs> give you an update on this. Uh, but I did, I did stick him in there at, at the end. So um, it just uh, kind of happened that way. Got it. Got it. Um, did, uh, did, is any of this uh, the... Uh, Brooke works at a, uh, I guess it's kind of a swim shop. Uh, swim she shop? works at Surf's Up. Surf's Up, that's it. Surf's Up. I have another novel yet unsold that was, well, I'm calling it a prequel now. And the, the three, uh, the four girls, actually. The sisters. The four, the sisters, I call them. 
Uh, there's, there's Brooke, and then there's an African-American girl, Hispanic girl, and of course, in Tarburn, I had to have a Greek girl. And they're all best friends. And they all play into the second book, uh, as not as much as the first, but they're all involved, of course. They all go to Mr. Francis' Valentine's Day Ball. And you're going to have to read the rest to find out. <laughs> That's a good story. But I, apparently you read the book. I read, I read every up. word of it. I had to, well, A, yes. I never have anybody on without reading their book. <laughs> but B, I mean, it's it's Laura Kennedy. Of course I want to read the book. I want to, I want to know, you know, can she write? And she can write. Good for her. Well, thank you. I, tr I try to write really well. I mean, it, seriously, I, I mean, I'm sure everyone does, but maybe some people try harder. I try to make three-dimensional characters. I... I have a problem with books I read where the characters are very one-dimensional uh, and, and you see that you know I'm sure you see that too and I try to make real people and uh, they're so real to me that sometimes I'll say something to my husband now I'm working on my third book with her and I'll say you know what Brooke said well you know what Brooke said I, <laughs> I actually said it but I'll say you know Brooke said the funniest thing she is so funny <laughs> And well, that's how far it's gotten, Bob. How, 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 how long did it take you to write the book? Actually, um, it, it's not real long. It's about 37,000 words. I'll probably make my next one a little longer. Um, probably off and on a year, but I could have probably you know done it in a shorter period of time, a book that length. You'd probably write in six months. It depends what your time schedule is. But I remember in the beginning, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And sometimes you just start, and then you just have to kind of let it simmer for a while. You know, I let my subconscious work on it. I don't actively sit down like in the movies. They'll show the guy the typewriter, the old movies, and then he's like, oh, my God, and he's probably throwing it. Well, now we just throw the computer. But, you know, I let my subconscious do it because subconscious is really what's writing it all. So there was a little period of time where I stayed away from it. Uh, but I believe it was about a year. Yep. And did you workshop this with other people? I do go to a writing group up here, and I have a small writing group. Uh, I'm going to give a plug for one of my friends. There were four of us in the group, or three initially. One of them, Adele, by the way, Adele Woodyard, and a friend of hers I'd never met. Her name is Carol Perry. Who I we also know. Do you, do you know I, Carol? I know both well, of those women. Well, this is a very small world. It is. Well, Carrie's, uh, Carol started her book which is called Caught Dead Handed. She sold it to Kensington. It's coming out in September. She has another, uh, she has a three book contract. Wow. Two other books. And um, she's going to go very, do very well with it. But the, the nice part is we both started our books at the same time. Hers was about twice as long. Mm -hmm. uh, so it took her a little longer to finish. However, we both sold them within about three weeks of each other. Wow, that doesn't happen very often. No, so anyway, you know, it's nice to work hard. And we look at each other's things. We print out, you know, a couple chapters, and we look at them rather than just hearing them, too, and make suggestions. So it's, it's, it's worked out well, and uh, I'm really happy for Carol. Would you, re would you recommend that approach to other people who are you know, trying to get that first novel done? I definitely will. Go to a writing group. But often with writing groups, they're reading, mm -hmm. and they're not looking at it. Well, ultimately, you're you're most likely going to be sitting there reading the book and it's it's good for editing purposes and and just overall yes I, I definitely would but you want to keep the the group small you know four maybe five at the absolute most because you don't have time to look at all that and exchange it you don't want to make it a burden mm -hmm. it, you want to keep it fun so you mentioned I want to be fair here you mentioned there were four women in this oh, group. Uh, one one girl a Liz Dreyer um, who um, I don't know. You don't know Liz, but she's very well made. She's an excellent writer, short story writer, and she's uh, trying to get her things published. She's had a few very short things uh, uh, in newspapers and such. But we let, made an exception. It's supposed to be for published writers. She's so good, we made an exception. So she's the fourth. Got it. Well, um, when you see Carol and Adele, who I do know, have, have known for some time, haven't spoken to in years, please give them my best. I will. I will. In fact, you may want to in be interviewing Carol in the future about this book. Oh, God, no, I would never do that. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> um, you know, I was thinking about the, 
the Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef, and I, I know the reason that I, I know that film is that when you, it used to be anyway, when you'd go to Tarpon Springs and you'd go to like the Sponge Museum and things like that, th- right. there was always a reel that was playing over and over and over oh, again from that okay. movie. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I haven't seen it for a while, but one of the shops has photos in it that were stills. Yep. And I'm not sure which one of them. But if you ask some of the older people, there was a gentleman I saw at a market one day. Uh, he said to me, are you Greek? You know, I went, no. Well, that's okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. But I was asking him about it. And he said his neighbor's um, home was a home used for one of the um, uh, the scene where the, uh, uh, the um, I can't, can't even think of his name now, the, the family, the conch, the conch family where they lived. They used his, his home for the filming. So everybody was involved in some way, right? Yeah, that was the thing. I mean, it used to, I haven't been up to the sponge docks in years and years. Uh, kind of once you've been there a couple of times, there's not a whole lot to see again, but I would like to go back. But I, I do remember years ago that, yeah, there was a, at least one or two places ran constant clips from that movie yeah well i've seen them i've rented the movie several times. i'm gonna have to buy it you know because i'm checking things yeah. in it you know for uh veracity you know well so uh you've got this book out it's uh yep. it's a nice it's, piece it's of work. official date is march 26 next wednesday uh it's already showing up on amazon i believe it, if it's not on uh, barnes and noble it will be and it's a paperback and um Hoping people are going to buy it. I think they'll like it. You know, you never know. You just have to see. But uh, the look, uh, the, the cover, the girl has the, the 1920s haircut, the Marcel. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just kind of coincidence that the Downton Abbey show was running and that look is kind of popular right now. And um, the reason that Brooke has the short hair is in the prior book, she cut all her hair off, so I figured by this period of time in, in February of her uh, junior year, it would be about that length. So that's the reason for the hair. Got it. That's the reason for that look, yes. All right. Well, so you're, we're, you're continuing to write? You're, you're planning? Brooke is now in Singapore. <laughs> sure she is. <laughs> yeah, she is. And uh, um, I'm writing a book. Um, I have her father who's in construction being uh, transferred to Singapore for a year and the family's there and it's pretty interesting. Uh, my husband and I visited there about a year and a half ago. In the back of my mind I was thinking this is a fascinating city, you know, fascinating and I'm not going to use this somehow. Well, I decided Brooke is going to be there and it's a whole new world, you know, it's a completely different reality. Very, uh, very fascinating there. I felt very safe in Singapore. There's not going to be much crime going on. Okay. Yeah, just keep <laughs> away from those teenage boys. Well, it's a dictatorship, but it's a benevolent dictatorship. Benevolent dictatorship. Oh, yeah. So yeah, well, my house is like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Good one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure your daughter would agree with that one. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, folks, listen, you can find my uh, friend Laura Kennedy's uh, first novel, Double Take, in uh, hopefully great bookstores everywhere, or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com. So if you're watching on the website, below the video, you'll, you'll see a copy of the book. You can just click on it right now, right this minute, and have it sent to you. You can have it in a day or two if you want to pay the extra shipping Great. Costs. I didn't know you were going to do that. Yeah. Uh, you've got a website. Do you want to give out the uh, a, a blog? Um, let me think here. I have, um, let's see, I have um, a blog. Um, it's called Laura Kennedy Author Author. However, the URL is laurakennedy17 at wordpress.com. Actually, dot wordpress.com. Oh, it would be dot. I always get those dots. Mixed up. <laughs> That's all right. So, laurakennedy17 <laughs> dot wordpress.com. Um, are you on Twitter or Facebook, any of that kind of thing? Yes, yes, I am. And also, you can just go to, you know, Amazon.com or Fire and Ice is the publisher.com right. or um, Barnes & Noble, any of those places. Very good. I think there's a few copies there at Haslam's, too. So Right here in St. Pete. Right in St. Pete. All right. Well, uh, Laura Kennedy, congratulations on the book. I was so happy to hear Thanks. from you. I was like, wait, Laura, Laura Kennedy? Who's that? Laura Kennedy. Wow, it's been a while. That was great. Yes, um, yeah. That was a, you know, I, I don't know how it was. It was a fun for, time. I was just going to say, it was a very fun time for me. It was a me. fun time. Not you know? at all profitable for anybody no, connected to it. No, I would say I didn't it. make any money that I can recall. 
<laughs> Everyone, hey, it was, but I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of nice people doing that. I had fun, and uh, it's been it's it's a good memory. So, thank you for joining us today, and uh, you know, good luck on the book. Hope you sell some copies. Thanks so much for your time, Bob. My pleasure. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. The preceding presentation was brought to you by The Realm Network.